Hello and welcome to this week's security management course. I'm Professor Wool and today we're going to be talking about firewall object namings. So what's the story? Assume you have a server in your environment and this is its identity card, this is its CMDB record. So it has an IP address 10.3.0.1, has a DNS name db.acme.com it is located in the DFW data center and it is a server type of, its, its server type is database. So you have this system over there in the data center and now you need to put in firewall rules that refer to this server and allow traffic to and from it. So how are people going to write the rules that refer to this, this server? So it really depends on how the firewall ma are managed and, and what the firewall vendor lets you do. So some firewall vendors let you use the DNS name. So people might write rules that refer to db.acme.com. Other firewall vendors require, require you to define objects and give them names. So an engineer might call that server in a rule. It, he might call it IP dash and then put the IP address. Some other engineer might realize that this is a database center, database server, and give it a name DB just for convenience. And each engineer might have their own way of calling things, and you could have many of these all referring to the same server. Now the problem gets worse if you have a diverse environment and you have firewalls made by different vendors because each vendor has their own rules on how you can call things. And let's say on firewall B, you might have to write access lists and refer to that server using some syntax like host and the IP address or something else. So the result of all of these different ways of calling the same server is management clutter. And this is bad because it makes managing these, these rules across all your firewall estate more complicated, more error prone, and you want to avoid it. And part of the reason why this is happening is that unfortunately almost none of the major firewall vendors give us a capability of reverse lookup. So if we have an IP address, we don't have a convenient way of discovering what objects exist on the firewall that refer to that IP address. And then people do their own thing and you end up in a situation where you have duplicates. So what can you do to reduce this problem? So I can suggest a few, a few tips that you could follow. The first is to clean up. You could use software to process your firewall rules and search for duplicate definitions. Find multiple objects with different names that refer to the same IP address, report on them, and then standardize and clean them up. So that's definitely a good idea to get to a nice steady baseline. The second thing that you can do is to define a naming convention. So this is a process oriented uh, solution where you decide how you want to call things and you could use as an idea you could use uh, uh, names that begin with a data center name and then something about the server type and then maybe the IP address and that's going to be the officially sanctioned name in firewall rules for this server if you decide that this is your naming convention and you educate and train your firewall engineers to always use the same tr naming convention then they will reuse the same definition over and over and not create duplicates because when they decide to create a rule that refers to an object that already exists they will automatically pick the right name for it and if the object is already there they will find it. And once you have a naming convention like this or something that you invent the next thing is to enforce it. Enforce the convention. And here again you can use software to help you if you have a change management system Perhaps you can program it to automatically recommend using properly formatted names when a change request is made. Or perhaps you can configure it to validate user-defined names and make sure that the names fit the convention. So you can do this in different ways. If you follow these steps, you're already in a good place, both in terms of cleaning up the old history and in making sure that going forward you're not making the problem any worse, instead you're making it better. 
Thank you for your attention.